Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakurash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, meaning of the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa. Coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit. All right, now in this lesson, I'm going to address a, a, a milk topic that comes up uh, from time to time. All right, when people are hearing us out on the highways and byways and they hear us uh, use what they... Uh, um, what we know is rude speech, all right, but, you know, people call it uh, using curse words, all right, you know, vulgar language or whatever the case it may be, and they think that we're going off uh, because of that, all right, and I just want to go through this, uh, through a couple precepts and um, show that that's not what the case is, all right, and that we can use uh, rude speech, all right, that we can um, even uh, curse our people, all right, and um, different instances as we're going to grab, all right, to show that, um, you know, that doesn't deem us as being wicked, all right, because we use foul language, all right? But without further ado, we're going to hop into it in Lord's will. This lesson be edifying. All right, this is the book of Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6. It says, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, all right? So we may use rough language. As Paul, he used rough language, all right? Various men of the Lord, all right? They use rough language. Even Yahweh Shad, man, he called uh, people vipers and uh, serpents, man. All right, that will be considered today, in today's terms, uh, curse words, man. All right, he would upbraid the people at times, man. Okay, so when the Lord was um on the scene, man, he wasn't just using soft speech. All right, he was letting it be known what it was, and it was rough. All right, and even um Paul's letters it says they were uh they were weighty, which means severe and stern. All right, and that's at times. All right, uh, we use that that type of speech, which shows that man. But it says, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. So. Even though we're using rough language, rough speech, all right, that doesn't take away from the knowledge that we're giving you, okay? That doesn't take away from the the, the proper understanding and these breakdowns that were uh, uh, given to the people through the Spirit and power of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. It says, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things, all right? So um, let's grab this in the book of um, James, all right? This is James chapter three and verse 10. It says, out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursings. My brother and these things ought not to be, ought not so to be. All right. And a person will read this and then see us using foul language or hear us using foul language on the line. And they'll say that we're going off uh, according to a precept like this, man. Y'all, y'all cursing with the Bible. <laughs> All right. Well, we have examples of men of the Lord cursing. Okay. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13 and verse 24. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them and cursed them. Right. So Nehemiah, he cursed the people. All right. <laughs> and smote certain of them. He even went to the point of where he he got physical with certain of our people and plucked off the hair, their hair and made them swear by the most high saying, you shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. So, all right, he did more than use, all right, actually a wish harm upon the people. And we're going to go into what it means to actually curse. All right. But even went further to even smoke certain of them, plucked off their hair. So he was a rough man. All right. Nehemiah was a rough man. He wasn't talking all soft. All right. He was, uh, uh he was passionate. All right. And that passion is seen when we're out in the highways and byways to the point to where we use that type of language, man. All right, but that doesn't take it away from us being uh, the true men of the Lord, man, the true servants of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Now, going into this word curse, all right, now this is just a definition from uh, the New Compact Bible, all right, uh, dictionary. It says, uh, curse the reverse of to bless on the human level to wish harm or catastrophe. So that's what a, a curse is, is to wish harm or catastrophe. Are right, using damn shit, fuck, whatever the case may be, that's not. All right, uh, a curse according to the Bible. All right, it says, um, I'm gonna jump down. It says, the modern Western practice of cursing, which is what I just used, all right, those different words, right, i.e., using profane language, and we're gonna touch on that, is never referred to in the scriptures. All right, so that's not what it's talking about <laughs> in the scriptures, man. 
Now, even they said uh, uh, profane language. Now, going into the word profane, I'm going to just pull up a basic definition. It means uh, outside of the temple. All right. Ultimately, all right, when you uh, go deeper into it, but just grabbing this basic definition on um, Google, it says profane relating or devoted to that which is not sacred or biblical. Now, when we're out there on the highways and byways, are we not reading directly out of the scriptures? OK. Of course we are. Right. So we aren't even using profanity. OK. It says uh, secular rather than religious. All right. It says if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of the most high. All right. So we're speaking things that are within the scriptures, man. And breaking it down correctly and directly through the spirit of power. So even in that, we aren't even using profanity, man. That's why I brought out that precept showing that it's just rude speech. And like I mentioned, man, hey, Yahweh, the different disciples, they would use rude speech at times, man. That didn't take away from them being the true men of the Lord. All right. So that's it on that definition. So let's uh, grab, I'm going to grab another example. All right. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 20. So evil be recompensed for good for they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away that wrath from them. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine. So this is Jeremiah cursing the people, wishing catastrophe upon them. All right. What did it say in that definition? It said uh, uh, to wish harm or catastrophe. All right. And this is what Jeremiah is doing. So going back, Jeremiah 18 and 21, therefore deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword and let their wives be bereaved of their children and be widows and let their men be put to death. Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them, for they have digged a pit to take me and hid snares for my feet. Yet, Lord, Yahweh, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from thy sight, but let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of thine anger. All right. So this is a grievous curse that Jeremiah is putting upon our people, man. OK, here's another one. This is Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 20 uh, and verse 18. It says, let them be confounded that persecute me, but let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but, ne but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. All right. So another curse. OK, and we can read this throughout the scriptures of our forefathers putting curses or right, wishing harm or catastrophe upon our people, man. All right. So when we go back to this in the book of James, chapter three and verse uh, 10, again, it says out of the same mouth preceded blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so, ought not so to be. All right. So this isn't talking about using a uh, 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 foul language, so to speak. Okay. All right. It's not talking about that, man. So I'm going to read up and then we're going to read down and get an understanding on what this is going into. This is James chapter three and verse eight. It says, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith, bless we the most high, even the father, and therewith, curse we we me curse we men which are made after the similitude of the most high out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursings my brethren these things ought not so to be doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter and we're going to go into what the sweet water and the bitter is through the spirit all right because ultimately just to sum it up all right this is speaking about teaching lies mixed with truth okay See, we have a pure doctrine. All right. We've got sweet water. OK, it shouldn't be mixed with bitter water. All right. It shouldn't be mixed. All right. With uh, uh, anything else, man. OK. Lies mixed with truth. But let's go into it. All right. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter five, and verse 26. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So the word. All right. Is the water. All right. And the sweet water is the proper understanding of this word. All right. The precepts being aligned properly, man. All right. This is the book of Psalms 119 and 103. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. All right. So it's the words, right? But verse 104, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. So when we're bringing out this word correctly and directly, all right, we're providing you with the sweet water. All right. Without any bitterness with it. All right. Because it's a pure doctrine that we're teaching, man, that came from the heavens. Right now, let's grab this going into the bitter water, Ezekiel 34 and 18, just to show you the, the, the separation. All right. It says, uh, I'm going to get straight to the point. Verse 19, it says, and as for my flock, 
I'm going to start at verse 18. So like you said, seemeth that a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the residue of your of your pastures and to have drunk of the deep waters, but you must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Right. So it says they're drinking which you have fouled with your feet. OK, because what you've got false prophets, false teachers. All right that have the Bible, that got this word, but what? They're polluting it, all right? They're fouling it, okay? Now, that word foul, it says a befouled thing, befiled, befiled, right? And um, let me look this up here in the etymon. All right, now the etymology of that word foul and as a verb, it says to become foul, rot, decay, meaning make foul, pollute, all right? So polluting it, okay? So when the doctrine isn't taught correctly and directly, it's being polluted, all right? That can be likened unto what? That bitter water, all right? So it says out of the mouth, let's go back into this in um, James. Let me see. So lucky I got a couple tabs uh, up. All right. All right, so back to this in James chapter three and verse... Uh, uh, 10 or verse um, 11, it says that the fountain send forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter. All right. Can the fig tree, my brother and bear olive berries, either a vine, uh, either a vine figs. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh, right? So we have to be teaching the correct thing. Okay. We can't mix this doctrine up with, with lies. All right. Like a prime example that, uh, that uh, Hebrew Sinegros, that would be an example of sweet water mixed with bitter. All right. The sweet water showing you that, all right, that we are the Israelites. But what? It had bitter water in it as well, man. OK. And the thing is about. um, Well, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much the point. All right. So like, yeah, I, I kind of lost my train of thought. All right. But let me go ahead and grab this other precept as well. I wanted to grab it. I forgot about it. This is Psalm chapter 58 and verse three. It says the wicked are strange from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. So those lies being taught is likened unto poison. All right. We can liken that in the spirit unto what? Bitter water. Right. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. So just want to grab that that other precept to support that point, man. Okay, of of what those bitter waters are, all right, in the spirit, man. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and read further down on this in James, and then we're gonna grab some more precepts and then uh, head out of here. All right. So this is um back in James chapter three and verse twelve. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine, figs. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. All right. It says. Yeah, but let's keep reading. All right. It says, who is a wise man and dude with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Right. All right. Because if you're teaching this word for envy and strife or, you know, vainglory in it or anything of that of that matter. All right. You're becoming a. a, a, a uh, how should I word it? Uh, a, a polluted fountain. All right. You're going to eventually start, start, uh, uh, speaking lies. All right. You've got people that have, um, changed the doctrine up because they got angry at, at the, the apostles or were offended at certain things or whatever the case it may be. And they therefore end up doing what? Start changing up the doctrine and teaching lies, man. Okay. For strife and vain glory and, 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 and other things, right? So it says, verse 15, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. So showing you, if you got that envying and strife in your spirit, all right, it's going to eventually cause you to bring forth confusion. Are right, you going to begin to teach confusion? All right. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, right? That's the sweet waters. All right. So this wisdom being taught correctly and directly is pure. All right. That's the sweet waters as opposed to the bitter waters. All right. When what? All right. When you begin to start teaching lies, man, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy, hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this in the book of uh, Matthew. All right. Because Yahweh Shai, he spoke on 
these things in a uh, in a similar fashion. All right. This is the book of Matthew, chapter seven and verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Right. So if you're a corrupt tree, you're going to start what? Bringing forth evil fruit. You're going to start teaching lies, saying things that are off. Right. Now, showing you what that fruit is in the spirit. This is the book of uh, grab this in the book of Proverbs. This is a uh, Proverbs. Man. How's the word? I think it's uh, 18 and 20. All right, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, and verse. Uh, yep, I'll start at verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. All right, associating, showing you what that fruit is that we're speaking about in Matthew, man. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. All right. So just showing you, man. All right. When we go back to this in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter seven and verse uh, 17, even even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. All right. So you're going to speak good things, wholesome things, proper doctrine. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. All right. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. All right. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. All right. So we know. All right, these different individ individuals, all right, by their speech, man, okay? By the things that they're saying, by the fruit of their lips. All right, let's grab another one. This is the book of uh, Matthew chapter 12 and verse um, 30, 33. It says, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. All right, and that's why in that James, it said, look, all right, the fountain can't bring forth sweet water and then all of a sudden bitter water, all right? Nah, either you're going to be a fountain of sweet water or you're going to be a fountain only for bitter water, man. All right. The same uh, 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 similar analogies Yahweh Shai is uh, uh, speaking about here. It says, uh, verse uh, 34, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. All right. So, yeah, man, here it is. If you uh, a fountain and you got bitter water, all right, you ain't going to be bringing out uh, 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 the, the, the fullness of the truth, man. Okay. The scripture says no lies of, a, of the truth. It says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. All right. It says a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. All right. For by thy words, thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. All right. So that's really, you know, that's really the main point, man. You know, I was really just focusing on uh, the 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 cursing on what it is, man. All right. But also want to bring a little understanding on this uh, James, the third chapter, man. All right. Going into uh, uh, this is uh, that sweet waters and bitters is lies mixed with truth. As a matter of fact, let's end it off with this one in the book of uh, Second Ezra. All right. This is uh, Second Ezra. Uh, I think it's chapter five. Yep, second Ezra five. And nine. All right, this is second Ezra chapter five and verse nine. It says, uh, "And salt water shall be found in the sweet, and all friends shall destroy one another. Then shall wit hide itself." So it says, "Salt water shall be found in the sweet." And the thing is about salt waters is that the more that you drink salt water, the more dehydrated you become. So you can continue to drink it up more and more and more. All right, but it's only <laughs> making it worse for you, man. And that's all these lies, man. Okay. You got Jake in these churches. You got Jake following a uh, uh, false Israelite camps, man, and it's really to your uh, your detriment. All right. It says, uh, "And salt water shall be found in the sweet, and all friends shall destroy one another. Then shall wit hide itself, and understanding withdraw itself into his secret chamber." All right. So the fullness of this truth, man. Hey, the Lord is gonna uh, um, cause it to um uh, to not be uh. Uh, easily accessible, as it says in verse 10, and shall be sought of many and yet not be found, right? So the, the fullness of the truth, all right, the proper way on how to please the Lord and so on and so forth, man, hey, the Lord is going is going to uh, shut it up, man, all right? It says, then shall unrighteousness and, and incontinency be multiplied upon earth, all right? So I'm going to end it right there through the spirit. Lord's word, I was edifying. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Bahashem, Rakakudash. 
that by honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone rule well, peace and salutations to the hope of the elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say shalom.